Good evening, classmates. Good evening, Doc Abilior. So, before I start my report, let me introduce my name first. I am Gina Abastas and I am currently connected with the Department of Education, Talon City Division. I am teaching um, senior high school accountancy, business, and management students, but I am not a teacher by profession. I graduated as BS Management Accounting at the University of San Jose Recoletos, main campus, and had my Certificate of Professional in Education at the Cebu Technological University. I also graduated my MBA at the University of Cebu, and now hopefully makagraduate sa DBA program sa Cebu Institute of Technology University. So, mura kong nag-school hopping. So, before becoming a teacher, I was a the um, payroll and payable accountant of Crown Regency Hotel, then a Chubby Chubby restaurant, then the senior bookkeeper of the Adalisay, and now a teacher at Tabonok National High School. So, my assigned topic is financial statements, cash flows, and taxes. So, these topics are a bit confusing. But I made sure that my slides are simpler to understand. So I hope we could learn from each other, especially from experts out there. So let's start. So I want you to watch this video for the introduction of the topic. Okay. I hope you. Okay, so that's it. So, financial statement. Actually, there are five financial statements. So, first, you have the income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flows, statement of changes in shareholders' equity. And the fifth one is the notes to financial statements. But, dili lang kaya nato siya itakol dere. Next. So let's define first what is financial statement. So it provides a presentation of a company's financial financial performance over time. And it is a report that summarizes important financial accounting information about your business. It is a collection of your business financial information. So Financial statements uh, is very important no, sa company. So first, the income statement. 
So, the income statement is also known as statement of financial performance. So, because it shows the performance, the performance of the company, and it shows the firm's revenues here, the revenues, the expenses, and the profit or loss for the period of time. So, the formula in getting the net profit is revenue minus expenses equals net profit or net loss. So, if, if your expenses are bigger than your revenue, then you will incur a loss. The next is the balance sheet. Balance sheet is also known as statement of finan financial position. So, it displays the company's assets, liabilities, and equity. The formula for that can be found in the balance sheet, you have the assets equals liabilities plus shareholders equity. So if sole proprietor siya, then it would be an owner's equity. For partnership, partnership's equity. But for corporation, the equity section is shareholders equity. Then, the third one is the statement of stockholders' equity. So, it shows shareholders' contrib contribution and movement in equity. Then, the statement of cash flows. It is also known as the cash flow statement. So, it reports cash generated and spent during a specific period of time. Inflows and outflows of cash. And it's also broken into three sections. You have the operating activities the investing activities and the financing activities the income statement again is also called the profit and loss statement so this is a report that shows the income or the revenues the expenses and the resulting profits or losses of a company during a specific period of time so this income statement is the first financial statement that we can prepare during the accounting cycle because the net income or net loss must be calculated and carried over to the statement of changes in shareholders' equity before other financial statements can be. The income statement calculates the net income of a company by subtracting the total expenses from the total revenues. So this calculation shows investors and creditors the overall profitability of the company as well as how efficiently the company is at generating profits from total revenues. So the users of this income statements are two um, different groups of people. So we have the internal users and the external users. So the internal users like company management and the board of directors. So they use this statement to analyze the business as a whole and make decisions and how it is run. For example, they use performance numbers to go whether they should open new branch, close a department, or increase a production of a product. So external users like Investors and creditors, on the other hand, are people outside of the company who have no source of financial information about the company except um, published reports. So, investors want to know how profitable a company is and whether it will grow and become more profitable in the future. So, they are mainly concerned with whether or not investing their, their money is in the company. You know, that if this company will, will yield a positive return no, for them. So, creditors, on the other hand, aren't as concerned about profitability as investors are. So, creditors are more concerned with a company's cash flow and if they are generating enough income to pay back their loans. So, competitors are also external users of financial statements. So, they use competitors' profit and loss to gauge how well other companies are doing in their space and whether or not they should enter new markets and try to compete with other companies so monisha 
So the format here for the next slide. So as you can see, the, this example income statement is a single step statement because it only lists expenses in one main category. So although this statement might not be extremely useful for investors looking for detailed information, it does accurately calculate the net income for the year. So, um, the net income calculation can be transferred to Paul's statement of owner's equity for preparation. So here, um, here, Pulse Guitar Shop in preparation. Income statement, this is the heading for the year ended December 31, 2015. So this is just an example. So here, uh, you should list all the revenues first, revenues or income. So merchandise sales, um, music lesson income, then the total revenues. Expenses, cost of goods sold, the depreciation expense, and all other expenses. So revenues minus expenses equals net income. So again, if if you have bigger expenses than your revenues, then your company incurred net loss. But for this example, um, naara shay net income. So we also have we also have um, <coughs> more detailed format for the income statement. So for comprehensive. One, net sales, less cost of sales, then you will get the cross margin or profit. You have the less operating expenses. For operating expenses, you you have um, selling, general administrative. And the result will be earnings before interest and taxes. Then you less the interest expense. If na, then you will get earnings before taxes. Mona siya tong EBT. Less income tax, then you will get your earnings after tax. Okay? So, by the way, um, for review, current assets are those assets that can be convertible to cash um, within a year or less. So, while non-current assets or long-term assets are those assets that can be held for sale or can be useful for more than a year. And current liabilities, those obligations that can be paid within the year, are payable within this year. And non-current liabilities are those mga long-term liabilities like loans, diba? So, current assets, you have cash, accounts receivable, prepaid expenses, inventory, and others. Non-current, you have the mga property, plant, equipment, land, and buildings. And for current liabilities, you have um, accounts payable, accrued expenses, and earned revenue, lines of credit, the current portion of your long-term debt. Well, for non-current, here, non-current liabilities, um, non-current liabilities, you have lo mga long-term liabilities like mortgage payable, um, notes payable, loans payable. So, a lot of times, owners loan money to their company instead of taking out an additional bank loan. So investors and creditors want to see this type of debt differentiated from traditional debts that's owed to third parties. So a third section is often added for owner's debt. No? So they simply list the amount due to shareholders or officers of the company. And unlike the assets and liability section, so the equity section here, this one, the equity sections, this, um, what you call this, depending on the type of the entity. So, for example, so again, no, so for shareholders, you will see um, terms like common stock, uh, preferred stock, retained earnings, and treasury stock. So, Partnership list the member's capital and sole proprietorship list the owner's capital. So, 
So, for this one, kindly zoom na lang siguro no, sa inyong handarait. You can zoom it. This one, current assets. Long-term assets. So, total assets. So, for liabilities, you have current liabilities plus long-term debt or non-current liabilities the stockholders equity equals total liabilities and equity so this side the total assets must be equal to total liabilities and equity so here are the examples for current assets you have cash and cash equivalents so accounts receivable inventory um, prepaid expenses and short-term investment so those things are can be convertible to cash can be used um, within the year or less and you have non-current assets so useful for more than a year you have land building and improvements equipment patent trademarks and intellectual property so this one these are special assets there are um, intangible assets, patent, trademarks, intellectual property, since dili man sila matouch, right? Still, assets of the company. And for current liabilities, you have accounts payable, accrued expenses. So, these accrued expenses are those um, services or goods already provided by the other company, but still, what pa ni mo nabayran? Okay, and other current liabilities. And for non-current liabilities, you have long-term loans, mga deferred income taxes, and other non-current liabilities. And of course, to get the shareholders' equity, so you have to <clears throat> deduct all the assets, all the liabilities from assets. So the format used here in presenting the balance sheet is the report format so it is a little bit easier to read and understand so that is why most issued reports are presented in report form plus um, this report form fits better in a standard size piece of paper you know so you can have the report form or account form in presenting your balance sheet. So, report form, mana siya. Makuna ang assets, then down. Then, for the account form, next. Uh, so, I was not able to attach the sample for the account form in presenting the balance sheet. So, for account form, um, makita ni mo sa left side ang assets. Then, so right side is the liabilities and owner's equity account form because it follows the accounting equation, which is the assets um, is listed in the um, left side of the equation. You can see the um, assets in the left side of the equation, then the liabilities and owner's equity on the right side of the equation. So this one, another example, another example of the balance sheet. So this one this is and account form or report form this is a report form so ana lang siya report form pa vertical the account form is pa horizontal so the statement of stockholders equity or shareholders equity um, displays all equity accounts that affect the ending equity balance including here common stocks, additional paid in capital, retained earnings, treasury stocks, dividends. So this is in depth view of equity that is, is best demonstrated, no? the expanded accounting equation. So in other words, the statement of stockholders equity is a basic reconciliation on how the ending equity is calculated so how did the equity balance on january 1 turn into the equity balance on december 31 just like that um, the last one is a statement of cash flow or the cash flow statement so it divided into three classifications you have the operating activities investing activities and financing 
activities. So, this statement of cash flow summarizes how changes in balance sheet accounts affect the cash account during the accounting period. So, it also reconciles beginning and ending cash and cash equivalents account balances. So, this statement, no, so this statement, it can shows investors and creditors what transactions affected the cash accounts and how effectively and efficiently a company can use its cash to finance its operations and expansion. So this is particularly important because investors want to know the company if the company is financially sound well. Creditors want to know if the company is liquid enough to pay its bills as they come due. So in other words, does the company have come um does the company have a good cash flow? So the term cash flow generally refers to a company's ability to collect and maintain adequate amounts of cash to pay its upcoming bills. So in other words, a company with good cash flow can collect enough cash to pay for its operations and fund its debt service without making late payments. So here, cash flow from operating activities, so it includes transactions from the operations of the business. So in other words, the operating section represents the cash collected from the primary revenue or primary income generating activities of the business like sales and service income. So operating activities are short term this one are short term and only affect the current period so for example payment of supplies is an operating activity because it relates to the company operations and it's expected to be used in the current period so operating cash flows are calculated by adjusting net income by the changes in current asset and liability accounts then here for here, investing activities. So, the it consists um, cash inflows and outflows from sales and purchases of long-term assets. So, in other words, the investing section of the statement represents the cash that the company either collected from the sale of long-term asset or the amount of money spent on purchasing a new long-term asset. So you can think of this section, this section, you can think of this as the company investing in itself. So the investments are long term in nature and expected to last more than one accounting period. And investing cash flows are calculated by adding up the changes in the um, changes in the long term asset accounts. And of course, for the financing activities so it consists of cash transactions that affect the long-term liabilities and equity accounts so in other words the financing section of the statement represents the um, the amount of cash collected from the issuing stock or taking out loans and the amount of cash dispersed to pay dividends in long-term debt so you can think of this financing activities as a way as a company finances its operations either through long-term debt or equity financing so financing cash flows are calculated by adding up the changes in all the long-term liability and equity accounts so uh, by the way I'm, I'm very sorry for the storing So this is a direct method for presenting the statement of cash flow. So here's a tip on how I keep track of what transactions go in each cash flow section. So for operating activities, it includes all activities that are reported on the income statement under um, operating income or expenses. So in the investing activities so includes all cash transactions this this the this area here so cash inflows from investing activities it includes all the cash transactions that affect long-term liabilities and equity so 
Whenever long-term debt or equity is involved, it is considered a financing activity. So like all financial statements, the statement of cash flows has a heading. Can I ask No? So has a heading. Tanan, tanan. So for financing, of course, this one, just like the examples, um, proceeds from line of credits. So how did you finance your how did you finance your business? So tanang mga imong gi maagi, tanang pa maagi nga ma-finance mo. So could be part of this cash flow from financing activities. And this one for the indirect method. This one. So you have to present the net income. So please na lang ko zoom. You have to present the net income, the detailed one, for the indirect method. And now, for our last topic, let's proceed for to the um, Philippine taxes. So, if you remember before, um, some of the some of the um, married individuals kay gadadali ug anak ug daghan just to be exempted sa tax. Kay dagko kaayo ang tax. Pero, here it comes, the train law, the tax reform for acceleration and inclusion law, nga niwagtang sa nang exemptions regardless if pila ka independence ang naaka. So, this is the RA 10963. This is signed on December 19, 2017 and implemented on January 1, 2018. So, this is the first tax reform program under the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte. So, it simplifies computation of taxes, it makes it effective system, this is DAO to be fair and equitable, which is, for me, agreeable. So, our Philippine tax system, no? the tax system of the Philippines is the most complicated most complicated uh, tax system in the Asia. Why? So, sa Tua, Philippines, it is more involuntary, right? Voluntary ang pagpay of tax. Voluntary until BIR catch you. So, here, sa, sa train law, so just like here, to be fair, so na siya redistribution of wealth. Equitable, if you earn more, you have to pay more. So, this train law mandates um, collect more taxes to those who earn more so that those who earn less will be benefited more. Diba? So, the target for this uh, train law is the lowering the personal income tax. So, this train law jud is more on uh, for the individual individual taxpayer. So, simplifying estate and donor's tax, simplified VAT system, increasing the excise tax of petroleum products, and increasing the um, excise tax of automobiles and introducing an excise tax for sugar, sweetened beverages. So, so, here are the updates on train law packages under the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program of the government. So, first, um, the package one is a target more on individual. In package two, trabajo bill. Package three, property valuation and taxes. Package four, Capital income and financial taxes. So I suggest if you are interested, you can um, you can read the ganito sa internet, no? You can read mga PDFs about the updates on the train law kaya taas kayo niya. So, but I would just like to highlight the package two trabaho bill since we are um, we are on um, business side, no? We are on the business side, the financial. Um, aspect of the um, business. So, 
for package to trabaho bill, um, this includes the lowering of the corporate income tax. So, the goal, the goal of this train law is to reduce the corporate income tax to 25% by year 2022 pa and improve compliance by simplifying tax rules like um, reduce the optimal um, optimal standard deduction, the OSD, to 20% of gross income. Di ba 40% man na karon? 20% of gross income for both individuals and corporation and enforce the MCIT. So, as what I have said, katong for the previous before sa train law is the as yung mga taxes na that even even 10,000 um, earner na siya 5% na tax, diba? And just like me or just like um, anyone else, siguro, just like anyone else na gamay, gamay o salary. So, in any 500 plus 10% of the excess of the over 10,000. So, the ding range sa mga parehan mo ang dili pang range. So, in any kadako ang tax, no? So, muna siya ang mga previous tax before sa tayong law. So, this one is the income tax table under train law. This is part 1 only. Um, applicable from year 2018 to 2022. So, this time, bisan pag um, how many um, dependents you have. So, regardless na uh, daghan kag um, anak or wala, so, 250,000 pesos and below, zero na na siya. Zero tax rate na na siya. So, magka-tax lang ka if your annual is above 250,000. Pero, ang exist lang siya. Diba? Exist lang siya sa 250,000. Kaya, exempted naman tani personal exemption naman git ng tanan. So, 20% of excess over 250,000. So, kung atong um, mga I think pila man siya, mga 30, 28, 28k per month or basta mo, lapas na siya sa 250,000. So, mo siya ang new bracket niya. Applicable from year 2018 to 2022. So, so, part 2, here, right, so part 2, tax tables under train law, applicable from year 2023 onwards, unless, kung mo tax reform, ah, uh, usama na siya, nanasay mag-update, diba? So, again, um, same, 250,000 and below, 0%, niya, yeah, above, 250,000, mas niga may gid siya. So, di ba 20% man to, karon mag 50% na lang. And on March 26, 2021, the President signed into law Republic to Act Number no. 11534 or the Create Act Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises. And for among the many among of the many updates no for this create act i only highlighted and in, i know i mean i only included those applicable lang sa to ang topic so you can also read no sa internet regarding this create act and na put sila yung mga daga ng mga free webinars na gi offer ang mga bir in different um in different um, RDO, no, sa BIR. So here, di ba sa train law, um, their target is to make it 25% by year 2022. So karon, gisunod ya po na to ang year, this year 2021, gisunod ya po na to ang, and not 21, the recent is the 30% ang atong income tax sa corporation. So, 30% na gina atong, mag, atong gi gamit. But, this this one, Create Act, na gisign na ni um, President Rodrigo Duterte. So, the Create Act lowers the corporate income tax rate from 30% to 25% beginning 
July 1, 2020. So, this one, this one. July 1, 2020, July 1, 2020, so signed March 26, 2021, so it is retroactive. So, mawa na siya. So, where the corporation's net income, di na ito magpaabot sa year 2022 na target, ngayon mo 25%. Where the corporation's net income does not exceed 5 million, and its total assets do not exceed 100 million excluding land where the business is situated. So the tax rate shall be 20%. So for non-resident foreign corporations, the tax rate shall be 25% beginning January 1, 2021. So nasabda na ni siya. So dili na siya 30%, but dili na siya 30%, but 25% siya na mahimo siyang pwede siya 20% so the range is 20 to 25% but um please remember that this create act is only um only up until year 2023 kini siya create act so Pwede siya, when can you say nga 20% ang imong i-deduct sa imong corporate income tax? If wala ka nila pa sa 5 million nga corporate net income and wala ka nila pa sa 100 million nga total assets. So, the MCIT or the minimum corporate income tax shall be imposed at the rate of 1%. So, previously, 2% ni siya. So, beginning July 1, 2020 until June 30, 2023. So, that's it. So, I wanna end this um, discussion with a quote by Franklin uh, Roosevelt. So, taxes, after all, are dues that we pay for the privileges of membership in an organized society. Pero mo alagi no, mga question ta. Are if is our society organized? No? So, more on Filipino traits. Reklamo here, reklamo there. So, hoping that everyone can realize the importance of paying taxes. No? It's for us. It's for us. And for those who earn more, pay more so that those who earn less will be benefited more. So, it's a way of help. No? It's a way of helping. It's a way of sharing your blessings. No, make it um, make it um, forcible. No, to to pay taxes. It's forcible. It's enforceable actually. In the part of the individual. So. Thank you so much, Doc Abiliar, and thank you so much, classmates. So, if I missed something, please let me know. If I have shared something wrong, please let me know. And I will be very happy if everyone will share on their thoughts or will add ideas you know, so that we can learn from each other. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you so much and good night. Thank you everyone. God bless.